Next, we will want to set up user interaction. For that, we want to display Oculus Quest controllers at the position where the user is currently holding his controllers. We will want to download some controller models. And the easiest way currently to get some is, for example, on wonderlandengine.com, go to Get Started Now, which moves you to the Quick Start, select VR on the left, and then scroll down to Controller Models. There you will find a link to questcontrollers.glb, which you can right click and save directly into the project folder of our climbing game. Moving to Wonderland Engine, you will find this just downloaded model in the climbing game folder. And we're gonna go ahead and open the player hierarchy and just drag and drop this GLB model onto the player object. This will import the quest controller models and add them as children of the player object. To make sure that these objects follow the player, and we can go ahead, hold right mouse down, move around with W, S, and D, and just move a little closer to these controller models. We can now go ahead and select the left controller, add a component on the right where we find the object properties displayed, select input as the type, open up the component, and select hand left because we have the left quest controller here. We will want to do exactly the same thing for the right quest controller. Add component, input, and then set the type to hand right. Saving this and switching to the Oculus Quest, we will already find that the page has been reloaded because Wonderland Engine automatically reloads browser pages whenever you package the scene. We can click VR and we will find that the controllers already move exactly how we want. Next, let's make sure that the watch also follow, follows our arm. In this case, we choose the second root node and let's make sure we don't get confused here and just call this watch. I did that by selecting the watch and renaming it by just changing the name in the object properties. If we reparent the watch model now to the left quest controller by just clicking and dragging it and dropping it to the left quest controller, then it will now move with the left quest controller. It is still in the wrong position though. And I will show you this in greater detail here. Instead, it should be closer to the quest controller model. And we do that by resetting the translation with the appropriate button by selecting the watch first, then going to object properties on the right and hitting reset translation. If we move closer, we now see that the watch is directly inside the quest controller, which was also not quite what we intended. We also see that it's rotated uh, inappropriately, so we go ahead and reset the rotation as well. We can now just place it perfectly as we want by having the object selected, then hitting G and G again to switch to local translation. That means independent of how the parent is translated, it will always uh, move along the parent's axis instead of the global axis. We just move the watch along the Z. And if we wanted to have very exact measurements here, we could hold the control key and enable snapping. Now you see the snapping is not very useful in this case because the snapping settings are way too large for our very detailed small movements that we want here. We can go up top in the toolbar and set the snapping to a lower value. In this case, we're gonna set it to five centimeters and move the watch down, holding control, we move along the Z axis and snap it down exactly five centimeters. To rotate, we hit R, R again, to make sure that we have local rotation, hold the control key for snapping once again, and then rotate until we reach 180 degrees. We do the same for the y-axis. And we see now that, again, the translation doesn't quite fit. So we go ahead, 
hit G twice to hit the local translation gizmo, move it up by maybe another five centimeters and then moving it by five centimeters in this direction. We see that's just too much with snapping. So we're gonna go ahead and instead have something like this where it's like uh, one and a half centimeters to maybe two centimeters. So let's go ahead and save this. Go to the Oculus Quest again, reload the page, enter VR, and we see, ah, the watch is there, but we actually made a small mistake. The watch needs to be rotated around the Z axis once more. So we go ahead and hit R twice for local rotation and rotate it by 80 degrees using the snapping. Let go, hit save, then package with control shift P and then go back. Now we see uh, it's soft reloaded, which means the rotation is now as we want it. We can see it is exactly the motion that we're looking for. The watch is definitely too small. We want to scale it up by probably twice the amount. So we'll do one last iteration on this. Go to the watch and just put in two tab two tab two to scale the watch up by two. Save and go back to VR and see the watch is now scaled properly. Once we hit the button, the we see, okay, the watch is scaled improperly. And that's the great thing about Wonderland Engine where the iterations are fast enough that you can just experiment and figure out scaling can be 1.5 instead. Maybe even move the watch up with the translation gizmo just a little bit and move it back to on the Y axis as well. Save, package. And then you'll notice uh, this is way closer to what we wanted. Maybe not quite, but I'll go ahead and fill with this. You can go ahead and uh, tune it to your liking until it fits. And in the end, I came up with something like this. You can see that the watch is not quite straight. It's bent because I noticed that my arm does not extend the controller in a very straight way, but instead uh, has a little angle to, to the controller. So this feels very natural and the size with 1.5 scaling looks great as well. Now we can go really close. We see that the detail is still there, even though we optimized this watch a bit looks really nice in VR and next we will go ahead and start climbing this wall.